Now let's look into the process for screen capturing approach. And here provide an API from an existing mainframe as well in a few steps, but building on the user screen workflows as we see on the right hand side and on the left hand side it could all again be API consumers and we are using our AppLinks Eclipse based software AG designer. And the process is to capture the screen workflows and then afterwards we can again generate these assets into the API provider in the same approach and consume it then from a client application. And now let's look into a demo about using AppLinks to integrate 8270 user screen flows. So here we will start with the application on the mainframe. So we have also an AppLinks uh, AppLink site and here in this AppLinks site you can close some of these previous uh, windows here to make it more clearer. We again are connected to our API provider, we have hosts and we have an application here, an insurance application with a session. I will log into the session so that you see how, how this looks like and this is another terminal emulation that is available even you can see inside of Eclipse and uh, I could also use the terminal emulation that we saw before but just to show you the strength of logging in to an environment with the integrated uh, emulation. So here I'm now really logging into this to this environment and you see it took over my session because I'm I'm the same user and I will now navigate back to to our ISPF and on this level I will now start a demo application. It's called demo ins. And this is the one that we want to use for this scenario, the demo insurance solution. So I'm switching here to the customer menu that we have. And this is an application where we have an insurance solution and we can browse different customers. So I can type here a value of 18 or let me take another one, 22. We get Robert Greening and we can modify his data and look into the details of this record. So we say we have von Gröning a Swiss ambassador and we can navigate to other pages here to get some additional information like that is from Berlin. And uh, now I'm navigating back in this, uh, in this process and I will show you in this step how AppLinks works. So this is users workflows yeah, that we are using and there are three assets relevant in AppLinks. First of all the identification of these screens. Yeah, so we have particular screens as object and in this case we are in browse customer screen and you can see how these different fields are identified. Yeah, so they, we have some nice colors that are showing us these fields and they consist of identifiers uh, so that the particular screen is identified and fields where you can input or output specific uh, values of these fields. And you are supported with the tools of AppLinks to identify and also yeah, create these, these screens. It is not necessary to create a screens, but it's definitely helpful to do so as it uh, really afterwards make it much more transparent and readable when you record the steps going through these different screens and maps so that you can bundle this as a, a service, a path, how it's called in AppLinks, to retrieve it as a service. So I will try to give you an impression how such a uh, service is recorded in this, in this uh, manner. Yeah? So let us uh, simulate one activity here and uh, we can do a recording of, of, this, of this path. And therefore I will activate the path and here record this process. So I will start with a recording and now begin with uh, some simulation. So I can specify an input value and here type in, for example, a value 27. And uh, then I can click on enter. I will remove this input value and uh, navigate to the next field. Type here an M. 
get to the details of Charles Keppel, and now we can specify some output values. So I can take the ID, the last name, and I can take some additional information here, like the, 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 the job and the nationality. And now I'm already fine. I could remove this output. I can click on stop, and I can give this a name, call it get customer short. And after creating this process, you see here the steps that are that are happening. That's automatically recorded. What is done? We can see this here. And uh, I will not go into the detail in regard to time, but it should just give you an impression how these activities that I was doing in maps are now reflected in this path procedure with different mapping activities. And the outcome is that I can now rerun this, this type of path. So I could move here back to this, this page, remove this information here, click so that it's yeah, resetted. And then I could now run this, this, this process to give you an impression how this works. So I'm clicking here on on run, I will now get uh, the value returned for this 27 value that I have specified that was put it in. And now you could see how it is navigating through this application, getting Charles Keppel in the background and here returning some values on the right hand side that I have specified as output parameters, the ID, the last name, the first name and the occupation in the long value. So this is to give you an impression how this recording works, how these paths are navigating through the screens and are able to retrieve you these values. And now I can log out and give you the impression how this is created as a service now. So each of these paths can be used as a REST service to be consumed. And for this, I will here create an, an connection in the background, the connection allows us to have a connection prepared and in the right position so that paths can start and uh, retrieve data. And if you want to have a service available, it is a so-called procedure group that we need to create. So I will call it the customer service, say finish. And in this customer service, I will add this get customer by ID method. And now I have uh, this procedure ready. And this customer service, I can now deploy into the integration server. And again, we have our dialog with our API provider. I click Next. In this case, I'm creating an API, an AppLinks connection. I click on Next, and I will choose my insurance package. I will reduce here some deta details, make it simpler, call it uh, the customer service connection. And on the next page, I will call this REST resource uh, customer service and click on finish. And now the assets are again generated for this service. So if I'm switching to the other perspective here, and we can close some of them, we will see in the insurance package <clears throat> now that we have ad additional assets and again, a REST service. And here I can also optimize this a little bit, make it nicer. Now I will remove this get customer by ID and just say it's a customer. It's again a get method. You're already familiar with this process. And now it's mapped to a nice REST service. And here I'm already finished. So after creating these processes, I can now move to another web application that I have ready. And this is the insurance customer web application. This is another SP demo application, but this is leveraging user workflows in AppLinks. And now I will put in here one of these IDs, like 27, I will say get customer by ID. And if I created this service right, we get the value returned. I think this is really cool. Yeah, we have now Charles Chappell returned. You remember the actor that we have done. We also have another guy, 22, for example, that is returning as Robert Greening. And whenever I click now on this button, I am connecting to our API provider where AppLinks is running as a component. And this component is simulating user workflows on the mainframe. Yeah, the one that we saw, this insurance application, is retrieving this data from subpages and then giving this back as a REST JSON response to this application. I think pretty cool.